It's like I'm looking at all these girls like, what are you trying to prove? Put some clothes on. trying to prove put some clothes on where is your self-esteem where is your dignity where is your self-respect do anybody have anything to look at where you're concerned and wonder what it would look like or do they just see it all and we say and we feel with the holy ghost i saw a picture of one girl on facebook that said i'm getting ready for my date for when my husband come titties all the way down to here I mean, if she probably moved like this, the nipples would have came out. And you saved? And you got the Holy Spirit? I'm seeing women of God taking pictures on Facebook with white beaters on. Are y'all kidding me? I'm done. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I can't. I can't just shut up anymore. We are believers. And there's something on you that's got to be naked. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. What is it? Because we finally got enough money to buy titties? Because we finally got enough money to go and buy an extra behind? And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy? So now sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord, here I am. Not God purge me and cleanse me. God, where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong with the spirit of the Holy Ghost that you say you got when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it that you don't think it's too tight when it's so tight in the front that you can actually see the print of your vagina? Really, y'all? Come on. Come on. I don't even know who I'm talking to. Today. It's confusing me when I, when, I, when I look up and I see people on Sunday mornings doing praise and worship in body contact dresses and dresses I'm telling you may unfriend me after today you may, you may literally unfriend me after today and I really don't care seeing women do praise and worship in bodycon dresses that is so tight until I can see the dimples in your behind so tight until I see your thong I'm, I'm confused about the call of God, the call of God on our lives, the call of God. And instead of us understanding that we are in a strange land and that is a part of the promise and it's a part of the promise because of who we're supposed to be while we're in that land, we are becoming a part of the land. And that's the part that just got me going that now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. I, you can't see the difference, let alone feel the love of God. You can't see the difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord on praise teams, ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breasts. Something is wrong. Who am I talking to? Who am I? Something has gone wrong. That there is something in us that says, this is okay. Oh, I know the Bible said that, 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 you know, and I know it's, I know we, we, we use the terminology people that we ought to come as we are, but why is it that we're coming as we are, but we're staying as we are? At what point does the line get drawn? That skirts are so tight and so short until half of your thighs are out and you're ministering and you're standing on put and I can't even, I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on, with thongy stringy shoes on, and your legs all greased up, 
What kind of message are you trying to send us? Because to me, that looked like somebody that's got a whole spirit that ain't purged out in God. And any minute you can just go over in a corner to a deacon and just raise your dress up and hit it right there in the corner. Because you don't even have drawers up. You got on thongs and some greasy legs and a bip bop skirt. And you are praise and worship leader. Y'all, something is wrong. Something is, is absolutely positively wrong with that. There's a time and a place for it all. And Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. That's not the time to do it. And I got to give it to you plain talk because you don't understand nothing else. That's not the time. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on? I'm not getting this. I'm not getting this. Jumpsuits on. No underwear on. Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx? Have you ever heard of something that keeps you from jiggling like that? And then you won't sit down. You're the person that just won't sit down. Because you come to church because you think you're cute. People of God, every time you look around, we are believers. And there's something on you that's got to be naked. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. What is it? Because we finally got enough money to buy titties? Because we finally got enough money to go and buy an extra behind? And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy? So now sex appeal is on an all-time high not worship not brokenness not lord here i am not god purge me and cleanse me and we looking like hoes and we up in the pulpit with leather pants on and some of us ain't got no business having them on period and we done went body con crazy everything is a body con dress are y'all serious you the women of God and you and you taking pictures with your shoulder all out like this and you and, and you the woman of God? You the woman of God and your your chest is all the way down here on Facebook. I don't care if you ain't in church. Who takes a picture like that? Because you're confusing us. You're confusing us. Because one minute you want to give us the word of the Lord. And one minute you want to tell us what God is saying. And one minute you want to prophesy. And the next minute we see you taking an all out sex picture and a selfie of yourself. And I don't care if you don't want me as your mama no more. I don't care if my spiritual daughters did just disown me and you could, you could unfriend me. You could say whatever you want to say because you know what? I didn't sign up for a hoe as a daughter in the first place. So you won't offend me. You will not offend me. Get on somewhere with that. Because if we don't raise a standard in the body of Christ, then where in the world are we going? I want somebody to answer that. Then what are we training this next generation? What are we training them? Because everything now is about the way you look. It ain't even about praise and worship no more. It's about what you going to look like when you get up there. I'm not, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not old fashioned. I'm, I'm not old fashioned. I'm, I'm not against people looking good. I'm not against anybody being beautiful. So you already gorgeous. So what do you have to prove? You already beautiful. So why does it have to be that enticing? We can't hear nothing that you saying that God say for looking at your shape. And anytime you got on a dress that when you turn around, I can see the very cup of your butt. The way your butt is shaped, I can see the crease between your tail and your imprint of your dress. Something is wrong with your spirit or you didn't have no mirrors when you left home. You don't have, y'all don't have to put no hearts up. You don't have to put no hearts up. You don't have to put no checks up. Somebody said, what does it got to do with faith? Everything. Because the Bible said, the Bible said, aroused by faith. Moses, when he had grown to maturity and become great. Refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When you are aroused by faith, you refuse to become the next hoe on the street. You refuse for people to look at you and think you are slut instead of an evangelist. You refuse for anybody to get your identification mixed up because of the way I look. And I don't care what nobody said. Well, you know what? It, 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 it ain't, it ain't what's, what you wear is what's in your heart. What, what's in your heart is testifying. The way you look testifies of what's in your heart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does. Our church, the body of Christ, is under attack. 
not from outside forces, but from within. The enemy has found a way to infiltrate our ranks and corrupt our minds. We who are called to be set apart, to be a light in this dark world, are now blending in with the world. It's become almost impossible to distinguish between a believer and an unbeliever. Why? Because we dress the same. This trend is not only disturbing, but also deeply sinful. Even our pastors and worship leaders, those who are supposed to lead us by example, are dressing provocatively. This is a disgrace. How can we declare his praises when we look just like the darkness he called us out of? Our dress code is not just a personal preference. It's a statement of who we are and whom we serve. When we dress like the world, we send a message that we are no different from them. We lose our credibility as witnesses of Christ. Imagine a newcomer walking into our church. They see the same provocative clothing here as they do in the clubs or on the streets. What message are we sending? That Jesus makes no difference in our lives. That following him doesn't require any change or sacrifice. This is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Modern culture tells us that it's all about self-expression and personal freedom. It preaches that we should dress to please ourselves and no one else. But this is a lie straight from the pit of hell. We are called to please God, not ourselves. It's about honoring God with our bodies, which are temples of the Holy Spirit. It's time for repentance. It's time to turn away from this worldly mindset and return to the path of holiness. We need to ask ourselves, is what I am wearing honoring God? Does it reflect my identity as a child of God? We cannot afford to let worldly dressing continue to pervert our church. We must be vigilant. We must be holy and we must be different. Our appearance should reflect the transformation that Christ has done in us.